We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Thank you for being here in this lightning talk at the um, IGF 2021 in Poland. Uh, unfortunately, we're not we're not able to be there in person, but we'll do our best here in the virtual world. Please use the chat to um, write some questions that we might discuss in a couple of minutes at the end of this presentation. Um, well, this is a talk in order, in order to advance our reflections on why do we need urgently creative ways of thinking and acting within the climate ecology, the climate crisis, the climate emergency we're facing at the moment. Um, this session will be hosted by me and by Blas. You can see her in the, in the screen as well. And um, I'm a researcher. I'm a, an artist as well. I teach hacking at the Willem de Kooning Academy here in Rotterdam. Also for many years, I've been working in matters of digital justice in the Latin American region and then globally. And Paz is also a researcher. She works at the intersection of technology and social justice. And together, like a couple of years ago, in a beautiful evening in Tunisia, we decided to start with this project, Gato Earth. So welcome to our, um, to our talk. Um, this is my cat. You know, so I, I always honor her in, yeah, in matters related to cats and climate. Pass, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, Gato Earth is an independent activist project born in 2019 from the urgent need to understand and document the relationships between technology and the climate and ecological crisis we live in today. Over time, we have realized that our project started from two assumptions, one true and one false. The true assumption was that the traditional field of digital technology and human rights have ignored the political discussion about the environmental effects of digital technologies. This is quite true, considering that environmental discussions in forums such as these were unthinkable to be popular until very recently. And the false premise, which is also related to the true one, was that this policy and activist discussion was somehow orphaned, meaning that there was little attention in general to the material environmental effects of digital technologies from a policy activist perspective. The research and documentation work under the umbrella of Gato Earth proved us wrong. Over the years, we have been able to document how research and activism regarding the material effects of digital technologies, particularly towards the environmental and the climate crisis, had indeed been part of the environmental justice activists' agenda. In it, moreover, one can see historical tradition of critical thinking, such as the critique of extractivists, capitalism of colonialism that produce sacrifice zones at the service of richer economies and how environmental justice is also part of the digital economy industrial complex. Thus, we have come across fascinating projects. For example, the Mosacat activism. Mosacat uh, means community social environmental movement for water and territory. Mosacat has led a solidarity struggle against the excessive use of water resources represented by a new data center that Google will install in the city of Santiago, Chile. With the excuse of cooling its servers, Google endangers water use for human consumption in one of the areas most affected by the mega drought that 
countries suffering due to climate change. The Chilean struggle is also related to the one led by several local communities in the United States with large technology industries and the installation of data centers that further stress the territories with drought. We have also witnessed the multiple protests that link two opposing places, Serbia on the one hand, and the so-called lithium triangle in South America between Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Neither places inhabitants accept paying all the costs of energy transition and digitization with massive lithium extraction that generates irreparable social, cultural, and environmental damage and takes the wealth out of the same countries. Or the growing opposition to rare earth mining projects involving countries such as Chile, Guatemala, or Greenland itself, which denounce not only the highly toxic danger that mining of this type poses to their territories, but also question the extractivist development model that continues to prevail in the energy transition and digitization. So now we can see that for years, the environmental justice movement has better understood the environmental effects of digital technologies than the digital rights movement itself. These facts make us wonder, what is then the role of the human rights agenda in technology in this scenario? And more to the point, can the digital rights agenda and methods themselves even affect the emerging the emergency we are experiencing tonight. Yes, thank you, Beth. Because uh, th this context can lead us to the, um, the central part of this presentation, which is about the creative strategies that we need to adopt in order to face uh, and fight this very difficult context. So we like to think of our work as a work that adopts multilateral strategies. It is um, a major topic, the climate emergency that cannot be addressed only from a policy perspective, only from an advocacy perspective, only from the perspective of laws. Even, even though all these disciplines have to intersect at some point in this thing, it is something that needs to be tackled from different disciplines. This is, um, this is part of how we envision the addressing of this planetary distress. Uh, this is not a normal crisis, it's a global emergency with pervasive effects and has the uh, and its effect is this planetary distress in all regions, all geographies, all generations. It's, um, it's also an unprecedented scientific um, scientific ch challenge in which also science needs to adopt other perspectives. I used um, this photograph of Björk, the Icelandic artist. She, for example, is working with um, the philosopher Timothy Morton on matters re related to the climate and addressing it from a perspective of art, of a perspective of philosophy. And it's very related to one approach that we have highlighted a lot in our um, in our work in, our, in this project, which is the post-human approach. This means, uh, this is, uh, it, this comes from a large tradition or not a large word, semi-large tradition of post-human philosophy in which the, um, the main point is to promote non-anthropocentric ways of knowledge. This means that not necessarily if in this crisis is the human, the one who has to be at the center. This is a crisis in which we have to think of maybe uh, nature, the non-human animals, etc. That's um, that's why we um, we also decided on this project, on this 
a newsletter, which is Got to Earth, a monthly dispatch uh, that we consider a piece of creative nonfiction. We thought that it was necessary to avoid the um, traditional logics that we see too much in the digital rights space. We avoid social media logics. We want to promote a different register, which is epistolary in our case, and also works as a testimony of what's happening, what's for, for, the, for the upcoming um, generations as well. And since our approach is multilateral, uh, we also are considering, we also executed research projects. Some of them what were already mentioned by Bas, uh, such as um, the matters of surveillance against communities, communities of activists, also indigenous communities. We also investigated the um, problem of the lithium cha uh, chain and the geopolitical implications of this extractivist practice in the lithium triangle. And in our most uh, recent dispatch of Gato Earth, we did um, a, a, a report on what happened on COP26, also trying to move out from the traditional policymaking approach. This is what we call a multilateral strategy. Um, something, that we want to mention at the end of this talk, we're already ending this, this is so fast aligning talk, is that, and now we want to share some get guidelines to move forward with this discussion beyond our own experience with our project. Um, but still these guidelines are informed by the project we've been doing in the recent years. Uh, a crucial thing is that we do not have time, uh, then we cannot adopt an approach of producing reports, discussing governance, these things that we do in digital rights spaces. We, are, we come from this space and we know what we're talking about. And we realized that these techniques truly make no sense in environmentalist circuits. And in our experience, groups at the front lines, the groups who are land defenders, they already have used the techniques of advocacy and policy. They went to these instances. So we should, we think we should think of strategies that are mindful of this urgency we're living. Some lessons we learned from activistic tactics, from activistic groups, involved in environmental issues is, for instance, an openly anti-corporate perspective. This is something that is not really adopted in user rights circuits, where tech giants and their liability are hardly addressed as in instances of mostly stakeholder advocacy. And in the case of environmental activists, they are able to name, I don't know, Shell, British Petroleum as central perpetrators of the ecological destruction. And I think we should also name Tesla and their interventionist attempts in Bolivia or Google and their responsibility on the drought in Santiago because of the water that their data center needs, something that Paz already mentioned briefly before. Um, Paz, maybe you can continue with the guidelines. Sure. Uh, a question that many donors and activists ask is whether the digital rights agenda should also take into account the environmental concerns of digital technologies. And Benai and I have been changing our minds regarding this point, especially as we have seen evidence of how the environmental justice movement already responds to these needs and instead requires very um, specific support from the digital rights activism, for example, you know, in its digital uh, security, the anti-surveillance activism, or, you know, climate change disinformation on the internet. Also, the complexity of the environmental and climate crisis, which needs a wide range of multidisciplinary specialists and scientists, makes us wonder whether it is necessary to force an agenda such as the digital rights agenda to new limits in the context of the hurry we, ha we face if we want to avoid raising the planet warming more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Moreover, in geographical places like Latin America, for example, the environmental struggle cannot be understood without the activism of women, land defenders, indigenous communities, and immigrant movements that come from their own decolonial and feminist traditions and practices, which open a range of advocacy agendas that exceed the classic human rights spaces. 
shouldn't these opportunities also be used to talk about technologies environmental effects perhaps this is where we need to be creative and think of grouping a different agenda not to stretch an agenda that accommodates everyone even if by force but to create a new loose suite that brings together the movements from different traditions that already work on the environmental effects of technologies in different aspects and let their experience develop their own methodologies, actions, agendas, and reflections better suited to the climate emergency. This not mean that the traditional agenda of human rights in the digital environment has no place in the environmental discussions, particularly concerning climate change. We believe, for example, that the crisis of the UN mechanisms such as the COPs in terms of climate change, change should encourage a cross-cutting movement of reform and imagination. Of reform in the sense of convening multi-stakeholders, including business, governments, technical sector, academia, and civil society that wants to accelerate their human rights commitments in both digital and environmental rights. We cannot continue to let the same hegemonic powers delay the survival of the weakest. We cannot longer wait for decisive climate action and the human rights movement in the digital context has a big space to push for clear, fair, and urgent commitments. And a movement of imagination, because in the face of the most significant governance crisis we have ever faced with both the environmental and digital rights movement, we must think about how international institutions that already exist will respond to the enormous challenges of a present and a future coping with climate disaster, where we will confront climate immigration, food system crisis, new pandemics due to the environmental rearrangements, et cetera, et cetera. And we have to start to wonder how these existing institutions using technologies and data for peace, justice, and human rights can tackle those challenges and how we can support them. All right, thank you. Um, this is our uh, last slide, which is we want to dedicate it to uh, invite you to contact us to this email, meow at gato.earth. If you want to share some thoughts, if you want to maybe write a letter to us uh, from and share the, um, the experience from your region, from your communities regarding uh, technology and climate. Also, you're super welcome to subscribe to our newsletter. The address is there, uh, gato.earth and you will receive uh, once a month um, a, a, a very um, a, a dispatch that is made with lots of love and with a very analytical um, perspective regarding um, uh, this topic that we're happy to see that is a uh, is now an unofficial track in the internal governance forum uh, i'll stop sharing my screen uh Bas, i don't know if you have uh, any uh, words to finish we don't have the messages in the chat we don't have much time uh probably <laughs> we have, you have only seconds. 20 minutes for the lightning talk but uh, please go ahead, contact us. Let's start this conversation, uh, you know, uh, um, beyond the IGF. Thank you very much for being here. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. We made it in the 20 minutes.